One of the things that I love Western Canada for is the sheer vastness of our wild spaces. And in this video, we're hitting up one of the most well-known 4x4 adventure routes right here at home. We're taking my trusty Nissan Frontier, packed full of gear in my Yukapak camper, and we're heading up to 7,000 feet following one of Western Canada's most iconic 4x4 tracks, the famous Racehorse Pass. And best of all, we finish it with tacos high up in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. My name's Dave, and I've spent most of my life outdoors here in Canada's western frontier. I believe one thing to be true. Outside is therapy. It's where we both reconnect and disconnect. I hope you'll come with me as we build, explore, and repeat. Bangers, buddy. Bangers. I don't even give a f if I get a, a strike on YouTube. Don't care no more. I don't care, YouTube. You're too controlling. And I need to be free. I need to fly like a butterfly. Uh, what's going on, everybody? First of all, most important thing that I'm going to do on this video is shout out to every single one of you that came out to the Alberta Outdoor Adventure Expo. What a blast. Honestly, what a blast. Our entire team is flabbergasted by the amount of support we got and by how many of you had a good time. This video is... I don't even know what video this is gonna be actually. I don't even know where this section is gonna go. But what I do know is that this weekend, uh, Cappy from 410 Expedition, one of the OG Alberta YouTubers here in the 4x4 space, is planning a guy's weekend. So him, uh, myself, Jason, um, who else? I think Fabian is coming as well, who's a top shelf friend of Cappy's that I haven't actually got to spend much time with. So it'd be cool to hang out with him. And uh, I think Andre from Sasquatch Overland is coming as well. And some guy who weaseled his way in simply by saying he's gonna make tacos, which it, like basically it makes him immediately like everybody's best friend. Uh, I don't think bad people can make tacos. I don't think it's scientifically possible. It's science. However, there is an issue. The timing chain is ticking. So these trucks have an, are notorious for having timing chain tensioner issues. That is an issue that this particular truck is having. Uh, timing chain issues are really finicky, guys. If your timing jumps while you're driving, it's really bad news. It could end up in a full engine rebuild and we don't wanna do that. So um, what we've done instead is just an oil change and we're gonna take it in probably its most technical four by four trail trip since putting the Yukapak camper on it and a lot of extra weight and gear. We have beefed up the suspension. We've got our rear tires for clear or uh, rear front and rear coastal off road bumpers for clearance. And now is the opportunity to actually test it out. I wish I could test it out in its prime configuration where everything is done. But ultimately guys, I'm just like you. We're just, where everybody's trying to do stuff on a budget right now, things are a little crazy. Um, we got some parts that we're tinkering with right now for the next half ton build that's coming up. And then probably another Dodge Ram half ton that's coming up after this one. Um, but we haven't had an opportunity to really take the truck out and really put this thing through its paces in its configuration that it's in now. That's gonna be the goal. We're gonna hit up three trails, a bunch of guys. It's gonna be awesome. We're gonna film the entire thing and share it with you guys on the internet here. But we do need to do brakes. We need to do rotors specifically um, on the frontier, front and rear, uh, because they will not, they're the one safety thing that I'm not going to comp, uh, compromise on. Um, so we're gonna have to put brakes on the truck right away. So. That needs to get done, and then hopefully if the truck doesn't blow up while we're out there because of the timing chain, we'll do the timing chain when we get back. I'm not gonna lie, it's not looking good. Uh, right now it's touch and go as to whether we're gonna make it out, guys. It's probably a four or five hour drive to get out to where those fellas are. It's already noon. 
I'm feeling pretty defeated right now. All right, guys, here's the deal. We've got uh, the brake back on. As you can see, we are still missing the stud, and that's fine with me because I uh, have used every tool in the book. I even went out and purchased a stud puller or a stud setter, and uh, it just mangled all my, all, it mangled every single one of my, de of my lug nuts. So as you can see, um, the stud in question is this guy here. And you can tell it doesn't look terrible, but it is terrible. You can kind of see that thread right there. This, uh, this stud just will not set. It will not set, it will not pull itself in. So uh, we're gonna rock it. So we're gonna go wheeling with uh, five studs on that one side, which is unfortunate because it's the side. It's the rear, which is carrying the Yuka pack. Um, it's not wise, but that's what we're gonna do. And then we'll add this to the thousand things that this truck needs. And maybe one day we can get them all fixed. But for now, that's what we're doing. Now, Jason, Cappy, and the rest of the crew are probably, if not leaving now, have already left. I know Jay's leaving in about a half an hour. Uh, so we're gonna be finding this area by ourselves. The route to get there is, I've never never been to this specific area that Cappy's at. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to figure out what happens here. But we gotta, we gotta dial in, we gotta get this thing ready, then we gotta pull it out, get the van, bring the trailer in, because the girls are coming over this weekend to the Adventure Factory to do AOA Expo uh, inventory after the show, just to make sure we have what we need and what we need to get for next year. Um, oh, babies. <laughs> what are you doing? Say hi, bees. Say hi, bees. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's what we have to do, guys. We're, there's a lot to do. And uh, as usual, you know, I'm not prepared. So, uh, yeah. So I got. We got it. We got to get her back. We got. We got to get going. Go on. Go in your truck, please, and wait in the truck. Oh, what are you gonna do now? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, there's no better way to start a proper mission without just a little bit of adversity. And with the truck put back together, Jason and I meet up on the road and head into the backcountry. We are absolutely jazzed for this. This is shaping up to be one heck of a mission. And obviously, we're also looking forward to it because this is one of the most iconic 4x4 tracks in Canada's West Country. And we're about to do it in big style with some great people. Ooh. All right, everybody. We, uh, we made it to camp. But tomorrow, the schedule is this. We're gonna wake up, we're gonna make some breakfast. We wanna be on the trail by nine. We've got two trails to do tomorrow, uh, or possibly even three. We've got a full tank of fuel plus a little bit of jerry can. Hopefully we have enough fuel, but it does sound like there will be a lot of, uh, a lot of driving. So uh, we're gonna hang out here in the Yucca we got Zeus. We got Zeus back in the camper, although he's gonna stay down here. Zeus is gonna stay down here tonight where it's nice and warm. Hey, bees. Hey, hey bees. Oh, yeah. That was good, babies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, super jazzed, super jazzed. Uh, I'm really digging the diesel heater right now. <laughs> Not gonna lie, it is very comfortable in here. But uh, we're gonna watch a movie. But on we're gonna watch a movie right here. Well, I sit here and uh, maybe you eat some chips, hang out, just hang out in the pack with the diesel heater going in the fall. So awesome. So awesome. All right, guys, we'll see you in the morning and we can really get this video started. Start it off right with some savage trail runs. See you in the morning.
morning, guys. Early mornings in the backcountry hit a little bit differently in the fall. And with that sun struggling to rise above over the peaks and that cool morning air crisp on our cheeks, we have a very stark reminder that in just a few short weeks, this trail may very well be impassable due to snow. But for now, we're going to make some breakfast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a quick breakfast while uh, everybody gets packed up. As you can see, we got the top down on the Yucapac camper. Check out all these awesome rigs here, guys. Like, there is some seriously cool iron here. We got Jason with his Jeep. Uh, I'm going to butcher everybody's names here. So anybody watching that's here, I apologize. I think it's Scott. Obviously, we've got Fabian and his boy, Cappy and Bruce, Sean, and Todd. Todd's running the go fast. And uh, Sean's running the Jeep. Oh, Todd's running the Jeep. Yeah, with the Osprey. And Sean's running the go fast. Okay, I knew that. This thing's not say. So sick. Anywho. Back to breakfast. Let's, uh, let's make some spam and eggs and then get on the road. It's times and mornings like this that I am absolutely thankful that I have myself a fart system. Fart systems are made right here in Alberta by Al and his wife in Calgary, and they can build them for almost anything. This one is specifically designed for the Yucapac camper. It comes with a slide out kitchen and everything that I need, completely accessible where I need it and when I need it. I really gotta give a shout out to all of the awesome Canadian based adventure companies like Adventure Trail Gear, Fart Systems, Rux, and of course, Coastal Off-Road. These awesome Canadian based adventure companies are building products that encourage you and make it a lot more comfortable for you to spend time outdoors. And when you spend as much time outdoors as we do, and a lot of the other guys in this group, having products and systems like this really do help and encourage you to spend more time outside. The way I look at it is this, is if you can be as comfortable as you can outdoors as you are indoors, you're likely to spend a lot more time outside. There you go guys, spam and eggs. Coffee, camping coffee is great, oh. but that after reaction is instant. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why that's why it's instant coffee. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't make, no, I don't drink instant coffee. I said, when you make coffee, it's instant afterwards. Yes, that's, that's the instant coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's already kicking off the top when I do. Hey, Dave. All right, everybody, with coffee and breakfast out of the way, we are ready to hit the trails on this epic adventure weekend. All right, guys, so we're just setting at the trailhead. Our master and commander, Cap, he's going to do us a uh, driver's meeting just before we do this little loop. Um, as you guys can see, it is definitely a uh, Jeep 4x4 trail, so we're golden. And it's absolutely beautiful. There's not a not a cloud in the sky. We've got some awesome rigs here, and uh, it's going to be a good day. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do some wheeling. <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to run into anybody in here. I haven't. We haven't seen or heard any quads or side-by-sides. When I was here last time, I was by myself. I was, it was a Friday night and it was dead quiet. So I know it's not always necessary to have a trail meeting before you're going to run any sort of trail system. However, this is Jason and I's first time in this area uh, taking two of these trails specifically. Um, so we were very keen on knowing who had been here before and some of the things that we could expect. Remember, I'm carrying the Yucapac camper and I'm really looking to test it out. But at the same time, with the issues that we were having, I don't want to put myself in a precarious situation and damage anything unnecessarily. All right, boys, let's do this. Yeah, I'm in.
I don't care. All right. As you promised me that I was more than all the miles combined, you must have had yourself a change of heart like halfway through the drive. I got to get off the second half, but it's the same. You had that just came down. All right, guys, here we are. This is our first trail that we're hitting this morning. I'm not sure what the actual name of this trail is. Cappy is calling it the Coffin Mountain Loop. This trail is located directly uh, adjacent to our camp. So what you'll see at the end of this trail is actually us coming back into camp uh, where the trailers are staged. There are a lot of really fun, deep puddles to hit on this trail. Nothing overly technical. Um, unless you're intentionally trying to pick some harder lines. Uh, you will see that I am trying to pick the harder lines because I want to test this rig uh, with the camper on it as best as I can. But ultimately, uh, first thing in the morning, we're just having a great time and I am just jamming out in my truck and it couldn't be any better. Alright guys, so Cappy's about to come across this piece of trail here where it dips down and half the, half the trail is actually washed out. And so there's gonna be some off-camber situations going on here. So we're all gonna take a minute. We're gonna let each other come through first and then see how it bads. I'm right after Cappy, so we'll see what this looks like right now. Oh, that's nothing. All right, I mean, that's intense. I thought he was gonna die. <laughs> Uh, this might be the only off-camber situation that you're going to find. It is not steep at all. You can already see uh, some folks have put a bit of a rock bank in there just to keep it from dropping too much. And uh, up and out of it, no problem. Planning on it. Going right over I, I it. Didn't, I didn't know. That's the big rock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. the big rock. Yeah. Oh, that's one way to do it. I ain't doing that. Is that? Hopefully, that's not oil. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it didn't feel as sketchy as I thought it was. I think with those SPC upper control arms, yep. my truck now has that long travel. Keep in mind, after some of the trails we've been on, yeah, it, it seems a little tame. Things, yeah, it definitely feels a little more tame. But yeah. it's still a fun trail. Oh, that rock is much bigger than it looked. It, isn't it? That's a, lot, that's a lot larger than I thought you it were, was. You were grinding pretty hard. Oh yeah, I smashed it for sure. That's why, you bought skid plates. That's why I bought skid plates. Yeah, Zeus right. showed us this. That's how a man pees. That's a man pee. <laughs>
a trail system that I would call a perfect beginner course. If you have a stock Jeep or a stock truck and you're considering going into the backcountry and exploring some of the more wild places that you just can't get to on road, this Coffin Mountain Loop, I would say is a great place to start. Obviously the rigs that we're using here are making light work of the trail that we're on and that is okay because that means that we're gonna make as least amount of impact on the ground as possible following all those awesome tread lightly principles. One valuable and important thing to consider when traveling and exploring through our backcountry routes is that these are designated trails and you are obligated to stay on the designated trail. If you do find yourself wandering off or you're in an area where you're not supposed to be, there's a good chance you're gonna get snagged by a trail cam and getting a nice hefty fine in the mail. That uh, was pretty good. Calm, <laughs> nice and smooth, a little noisy, but it was pretty good. I mean, you got one good creek out of it. Yeah, yeah, but anything anything spooked you? No. No, pretty pretty tame. Pretty tame. Yeah. One rock poking out, I didn't want to catch the tire on it, so. It started out pretty nice. We got these nice kind of grassy knoll hills, and then as we got up, then all of a sudden there was death-defying drops on either side. And, oh my God, the Sasquatch that jumped out, I almost hit him. In all honesty though, this is a really fun trail. What a great day out. This, is, this has been absolutely amazing with some amazing people. 100%. And you know what? Um, I've never been out here, so I can definitely see coming out here camping a little bit more and, and having fun on these trails. Thanks, Cappy. For yeah, thanks, Cappy, for the invite. Two more trails to do yeah. that are even more epic than this. Sweet. I'm in. Yeah. All right. Two more trails. Two more. <laughs> cool. Let's get her, boys. All right. I'm in. One steep, rocky descent, and we find ourselves pulling back into camp, getting ready to hit up Racehorse Pass. Don't let steep declines or inclines discourage you too much from hitting cool obstacles. With four low and adequate throttle and brake control, you're sure to have enough control to make something that might look scary right, guys, actually be is. a really good time. Coffin Mountain Loop. And now uh, everyone's gonna come off the trail. We're gonna gather, boys are gonna hook onto the trailers and we're gonna make our way to the next trailhead. Absolutely savage day. It's 12.30, beautiful day. Unreal. So there are actually three trailers in this group right now. There is the one that Cappy built himself, that's his adventure trailer. There is also an off-grid expedition being pulled by Todd and his Jeep running 40s. And then Scott is pulling an awesome beaver built trailer with his Jeep Gladiator that he has actually rigged up as a bit of a camp kitchen or a food trailer that we're gonna be able to test out a little bit later in the day where he has decided to make us tacos. got some lunch in us, trailers are all hooked up, and uh, we are on our way out now to the second trail. So we're going to hit the 40 and see where Cappy's going to take us next. All in all, nice easy trail, nice way to start this trip. Beautiful, beautiful scenery, and even some wildlife. So we saw a bear, some grouse, obviously there's lots of cattle, free range cattle in the area. So beautiful spot.
time you think we will be there? Well, it's funny you should ask. Bruce and I are talking here, and unfortunately, we're going to have to miss 225, 226 today. We're going to have to start going up Racehorse Pass right now. And tomorrow, if you guys want, we can go do 225, 226. But unfortunately, uh, time has really escaped us, and we just have to start making our way now. Well, pulling these trailers does slow us down a lot more, too. I mean, if we weren't, we'd be a lot quicker. But, yeah, it, you know, you got to factor those kind of conditions in. Yeah, that totally makes sense. This is Racehorse. This is Racehorse Pass. Hoorah. Hoorah. All right, guys, here we are. Now we're going to start making our way up Racehorse Pass. We weren't able to do the other two trails we were trying to hit today. Uh, just the dynamics of the trip. We are pulling some trailers. Things are taking a little longer. So now we're, now we're doing Racehorse. Now we're doing Racehorse. Lots of ruts at the beginning and then flattens out and a beautiful shelf road, rocky section up to the top epic views there you go that's what we're expecting so we're gonna get back in it no rest for the wicked we are short on time so <clears throat> let's get after it okay so right off the hop guys there is a an immediate and clear distinction between the road that you're on yeah make sure you follow the leader there's a clear distinction between the road that you're on Yeah, I'm in four low and two um, You can immediately see a clear distinction between a rough road and a trail system So there is some, some footage getting being gotten But I am going to focus on driving so it's up and there's some nice divots. You're not gonna get a stock truck through there at stock height with stock tires. It won't happen. So this is this is very much a, a clearance, a barrier to entry for racehorse pass is probably Jason? clearance. As a content creator, it is always and seemingly notoriously difficult to convey through video just how technical or not technical a trail system can be. Having the benefit of having the vehicles in front of you to kind of show you some of the angles that you're going to expect doing a trail like this is also really helpful. However, it still doesn't quite convey the importance of picking a good line and making sure that your tires stay on the high side of the trail. As you can see here, on the right hand side of us is a nice big V-notch, only a couple feet deep, I would say maybe three, four feet deep. So the Alberta side of this trail does not appear to be as technical as the BC side. However, the BC side is no longer accessible to us. So the front here is set up with a, approximately a three and a half inch suspension lift with Bilstein 5100s and SPC upper control arms, giving us a budget build long travel suspension system that is definitely being put to work out here right now. Now it's important to remember that you're probably not going to be alone, especially on a trail as popular as Racehorse Pass. We had a couple of bikes and a couple of quads show up this weekend as well. So we just pull over, slow down, give them the right of way, and we are on our way. Yeah, 
Yeah, you think twice. Well, Jay, what do you think? Oh, that was way too fun. Yeah. Now, that was reminiscent of Marble Mountain. Yeah. The yeah, the, the, I mean, Marble, I still think Marbles was deeper. Oh, it was deeper. It was but deeper. It def I definitely was like, you know what? I'm going to pay attention to yep. what I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Not scary, but fun. It's pretty great. Yeah. I you in your 40s. I could have done it. You probably just could have drove yeah. through oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're looking at these ruts like, guys, <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys. Now, most sources on the internet are going to claim Racehorse Pass as being a difficult to moderately intermediate trail. I would say that's probably a decent examination of the trail. However, it is very much dependent on your skill level as a driver and the capabilities of the vehicle you're bringing up. There is some specific and some strategic lines that you're gonna have to follow, and you're gonna wanna make sure that the people in your group are competent and confident driving on very, very steep rocks with very, very steep drops off of one side. If you are scared of heights, I would not recommend doing Racehorse Pass as a driver. I am absolutely awestruck at the beauty that is Racehorse Pass. Videos just do not do it justice. And I am eternally grateful and thankful that we were actually able to come out here and experience this trail firsthand. Because just last year, there was concerted effort to shut this trail down on both the Alberta and the BC side. Thankfully, the Alberta side that you see here today remains open. However, the BC side is closed permanently, lest you be faced with a $500 fine for everybody in your party. I really can't stress enough how important it is for us to rally together and find ways to keep these beautiful spaces open specifically for off-road recreational use so that not just us but our kids and our kids' kids can enjoy the same off-road freedom that we have experienced here today. And you've heard it said on this channel all the time, it is moments like this and places like these that make us want to live free and be wild. As we come to the end of the iconic shelf road on Racehorse Pass and Crow's Nest Mountain in the background tucks in behind the jagged cliff face, I'm reminded of the stark familiarity of the landscape between here and South and Central America and absolutely enthralled and blown away that this beauty exists right here at home. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely stunning here. This is, uh, this is not a hard trail, and it is one you need to you need to try. You need to try. You need to get to. You need to do Racehorse Pass. It needs to be on the list for sure. That was incredible. I think that's the, I think that's the end of it. That's the end of the sketchy stuff. We should be coming around the corner. Yeah. The right little camp spot is right down here in the left. We call that the, the Super Bowl, and it's nice, but you can only fit about two rigs in there. Uh, super gnarly getting down as a big boulder to navigate around, but I've been in there twice and it's quite pretty. What did you think of that? That was nuts. Yeah, that was nuts. I mean, you see it on videos, yeah. right, all the time, but it just doesn't click, and then you're like, holy Moses. You get the register of the beauty. Yeah, you actually get to experience it. That's incredible. Yeah. I guess we should probably see if find places here, hey? We're just gonna 
level our truck out a little bit using some rocks. That's why your wife likes me. What a beautiful spot, eh? Look at that. Wow. That's what dreams are made out of, folks. <clears throat> Don't let people downplay this. Don't let people tell you. Race hours pass. <sighs> Whatever. Don't. Do it. It's a beautiful spot. I really enjoy it here. You really feel the size of this mountain when you're in front of it. Like, it's probably... It's incredible. Just incredible. So, ever so grateful to be here. We're gonna set up camp right now. Parked in the right spot, ladies and gents, because we got a beautiful picture window here. And that is our view. Rux out. Shout out to Rux. You guys make a savage product. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for tacos. I really got to give a big shout out to Scott. It is no easy feat to feed uh, six or seven grown men, uh, let alone in the mountains, and have it be like restaurant quality food. Scott, you are an absolute savage at what you do. I absolutely appreciate you. Thank you so much for cooking. And you guys will also notice that some of us are sporting some interesting headwear. Uh, Cappy did inspire everybody to bring a crazy hat for our Saturday night camp out here at Racehorse Pass. Man, what an incredible day this has actually been. And uh, you know what? We have a whole new day tomorrow of trail riding as well this video is not over yet stay tuned for now though we're going to sit down enjoy some tacos made by a chef absolutely incredible you're really good at it oh yeah close up just like that mm. yep yes yeah, as as they're hot I'm just, gonna, I'm just trying to be Somebody polite. If you guys see, don't no, take I see Cappy there. sitting her eyeball on it. That's why. Well, the last one I took came off the grill. It was hot. <laughs> it was like regret. Well, as fast as Scott was laying him down, we were picking him up. And I can't tell you guys how just how absolutely delicious these were. Uh, five stars. Five stars at 8,000 feet. This is going to be one for the books, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be one for the books. I hope not. You know what happens if the first minute goes down, right? Oh. Okay, hold on. Give me 15 minutes. I'm up for another one. <laughs> <laughs> I just need a nap. I just need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody.
Everybody's going like this. Not it. All right, guys. Well, that was a beautiful dinner. And uh, it's witching hour now. Sun's about to crest down. Just past the mountain, you can kind of see it peaking right there, which means it's gonna go away pretty soon. We had an incredible day today, and uh, I, I can't, I got no words. I got no words. Everybody that's here is just top shelf. But uh, we got a fire going now, so we're gonna hang out by the fire for a little bit. And uh, a couple old boys just rolled in to the top here in a little Dodge Dakota. So they're saying, hey, what's up? And I think Jason might be going to bed because, man, those tacos. Delicious. But we're gonna spend a little bit of time by the fire, guys. Um, I really hope you guys are enjoying this adventure so far. Uh, if you are, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We do this kind of stuff pretty regularly. And like, man, Frontier, you could pack, you can do some wild stuff with it. So absolutely jazzed to be here. Such, such a, such a great weekend. I mean, the fact that I get to do this for a living blows my mind. <laughs> it blows my mind. Um, but ultimately super grateful and uh, grateful for you guys for hanging out and enjoying these these uh these videos we've been doing it for a minute now but it's a great time and i get to do stuff like this so uh we're gonna put some pants pants and a sweater on because it's gonna get cold pretty soon um and then we're gonna hang out with the fire have a couple drinks and talk about the way talk about the day talk about the trails and probably go through some footage because there's some great footage so we'll see you guys when we see ya the burrito and it looks like poo. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 That was delirious, this delirious wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Michael Jackson suit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, movie from Eddie Murphy? Uh, Shrek? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> the voice of that donkey. counts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Night number two in the Yucca Pack. Hey, Jay gave me a new schmog. Love you, Jay. Thanks, man. We got Zeus taking his naps. Oh, he's got a bone here as well. Oh, yeah. Not bad, eh, boys and girls? Not bad. We're gonna drink some Tang. Uh, eat a taco, which I'm actually gonna put in front of my heater right now to warm it up. And, uh, yeah, great day. There's no entertainment and no internet. So what do you do on a journey like this for four and a half days? How boring does it get? And why am I even here? All right. Good morning, everybody. And welcome back. Look like an emo kid. Well, tonight was the night that I gave off the air. Uh, it's really early in the morning. It's just past 6 30. And the, the wind had picked up quite a bit last night, and it. Oh, there's the alarm. And it, uh. sorta caused the handle of my camper top to flop and flop and it got really annoying so I woke up to let Zeus out and I was just like you know what that sunrise is amazing Cheers, everybody. 
beautiful morning in some beautiful places. I think I'm going to turn the heater on and just hang out here and watch the sunrise for a bit. It's the move. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's, um, it's approaching 8.30, and we've got some uh, low-pressure systems coming in. You can feel the moisture in the air right now. We want to get to the bottom of the hill, bottom of the mountain, before before it becomes a problem. So we're all packed up. Cappy? We're going to do a group shot right on that fat, flat pl uh, plateau down there. Okay, like a yeah. photograph? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Gabby. <laughs> well, ready to go down? Heck yeah. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful drive down. Hopefully we get some awesome rain. Absolutely. Make things crazy. I'm gonna get some shots of you guys rolling down that, that ledge. Now I'm not an overtly religious man. I wouldn't even call myself a spiritual one. But if I were, then these men would be my congregation. And these places would be my church. You see, I believe we are not merely a part of nature, but we are a force of it. And I will forever seek out people and places that challenge me. It's been an absolutely crazy, couple of years since starting Yucapat Campers and the AOA Expo and even this channel and moments and trips like this really help me to keep things in perspective as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. What originally started as just a hobby project has evolved into what you see here today. An absolutely amazing lifestyle that I not only get to share with you but share with the men in this group and maybe help inspire other people of all backgrounds to get out and explore the wild places. Don't fear the unknown. Walk boldly into the dark and say, I am here. And you will find others among you that strengthen you and encourage you to continue. And with that, we go our separate ways and the rest of our team continues up the trail 226 in search of more adventure. It's supposed to be unlocked all the time. And these are for the snowmobilers in the winter. And uh, so they make sure that uh, snowmobilers have emergency shelters. So it usually comes with a barrel stove, some tables, some cooking stuff. You know, there's usually a book where this one's got a wall. Then you got some griddles down here. And it looks like there is probably some sort of electricity here. Um, however, how that works, I don't know. But. Yeah. Pretty nifty, eh? These will be open year round, um, specifically for emergencies. So if you ever need to use one in the back country, you see a random structure that looks like this and it's unlocked, it's probably there for emergency use. But we're on trail 226 now, and we just did a pit stop for me so that I could. Take a bathroom break. So now we're gonna go back up this little hill and meet up with the rest of the team. Caught behind Venetian blinds, 
Try to reach for the city lines This ain't where I belong Ain't look at me, man, what I become A beautiful way to end this trip. Trail 226 is an extremely tame and very friendly 4x4 track. If you have a stock vehicle or you're just getting into 4x4 driving, again, following the same concept as Coffin Mountain Loop, this would be an excellent trail for you to pack the kids up and come out and explore for yourself. It's a very narrow, rocky trail with a couple of steep inclines that you're really going to enjoy driving. And best of all, near the end, you emerge into this nice open area that's perfect for camping. An absolutely great way to end an epic trip. And pretty soon we find ourselves reaching the end of our final trail, marking the beginning of the end of this trip. And the reality is dawning on all of us that soon we will be back in the real world doing it is what we do. All right, ladies and gents. So 226 is going to be the last trail that we do on this uh, adventure tour this weekend of ours. So we are uh, going to spend some time here. Maybe uh, put some food and water in our stomachs. Just look at that, eh? Beautiful little horseshoe here you can turn around in. And uh, overall, a very, very, very easy trail. Might even call it a Sunday drive. But what a, what a beautiful spot. So what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to put some food in our gullet. We're going to hang out a little bit. And then we're going to start making our way back down the trail and uh, into civilization. I'm probably going to try and do some fishing on the way. Shout out to all the people that came out and hung out with us this weekend. Uh, like, literally, all of you. It was absolutely incredible hanging out with everyone. Uh, shout out to Cappy for the big invite and for organizing the whole thing, putting everything together. Um, it's been it's been a riot. You know, guys, doing trips like this is fun and awesome, and it makes it a hell of a lot easier to do when you've got awesome products and partners like we do here at Blind Man Outdoors and Blind Man Overland. Without companies like Coastal Off Road and Rucks and Adventure Trail Gear. None of this kind of stuff would be possible in the, in, in, the, in the quality of the experience that we have. So shout out to Coastal Off-Road, shout out to Rux, shout out to Adventure Trail Gear. Uh, obviously, you guys know Jason, Overland Alberta, and you can pack campers. We came out to test, we had a great time, we got nothing that's broken, everything was working just fine, we had a savage time doing it. So shout out to everybody that came out, Quinton, Fabian, uh, Cappy, Bruce, Jason, Todd, Sean, Scott. It was awesome hanging out with you guys. You know the deal. If you guys like this kind of content, I'm going to encourage you guys to hit that like and subscribe button. But for now, live free, be wild. We'll see you on the next one. Trail repairs.